Hello everyone, it's Michaela here, scientist, I build things. It's been a long time since uh, I made a video. I've been working on something really big, it's still not ready yet, unfortunately. But in the meantime, I thought we'd have a little bit of a filler episode, which is also a really good episode, which talks about a question that we pretty much wondered ever since microwaves existed in the first place. And that is why, in the name of God, does the bowl get so hot and your food stays so cold? I'm making lunch and it always bothers me every time. So with this video, I hope to do some experiments, do some science on the microwave, figure out the answer to that question. And uh, hopefully this will be a fun way to spend my Sunday. I hope. Roll the intro. I became a scientist really to answer the unanswerable questions and, and benefit humanity. You know, uh, what makes the bowl so hot in the microwave? Why is it that when you order something online, Google advertises the same product to you even though you've already bought it? Why is it that when some guy approaches you about being a photo shoot model for his Instagram profile, that he never has a good Instagram profile? It's, it's these sorts of questions that, that drive me to do what I do and uh, really help make humanity a better place. Um, in this case, with microwave knowledge. So there's two things that could be going on here. The first is that the bowl itself is made up of a material that absorbs microwaves as well. And so when you're cooking the food, you're actually also cooking the bowl. The second is that there's water molecules somehow in the bowl and it's cooking the water molecules, which is heating up the bowl. And the third, which is the theory that I think is true, is that when you cook food, a lot of the water melts and sits on the bottom of the bowl under the food. The water will heat up under the food. And since most of the water is at the bottom of the bowl, the bottom of the bowl gets hotter than the food because there's just a bigger collection of water down there. That makes the most sense to me. But to really put this theory to bed, we're going to do a few simple experiments. We are going to put an empty bowl in the microwave, measure its temperature before and after. I have a great tool for this. One moment. It's a temperature gun. It's even got like a laser. Look at that. Hold on. Watch this. See that little red dot? And it tells you the temperature. So we're going to use this little doohickey to assess the temperature of the bottom of the bowl before and after microwaving for five minutes record the results, and uh, we'll see what conclusions we can draw. So let's do some science with near bowl. Dry bowl. Temperature is 71 degrees. No water, no nothing. Go in the microwave for five minutes. You know, science is a really, really exciting thing. You know, a lot of people think science experiments are boring. You know, what are you doing with yourself? You know, you're just watching stuff move around in a machine and then getting confused and crying. But you know, it's, it's, it's really quite exciting when um, you try something and it almost works. I'm getting kind of bored, so we're just gonna do two and a half minutes. Cool, cool. Okay, two and a half minutes. The bowl is hot to the touch. Hold on, hold on, hold on. 175 degrees? That's insane. The bowls literally get just as hot as the food. I thought that was just a coincidence. And I guess because there was no other food to absorb the microwaves, all of the microwaves got absorbed by the bowl. Jesus, I can't even, I can't even touch that. That's crazy. I did not expect this. I was wrong. How am I wrong? I'm always right. Okay, so apparently porcelain bowls uh, absorb microwaves. Okay, next up we're gonna try a plastic Tupperware. Okay, so about 73 degrees. We're gonna put this in here for two and a half minutes also, see what goes on. Okay, it looks like our dinner is ready. 120, 119 degrees. Yeah, so it's not the food heating up the bowl or the water collecting at the bottom heating up the bowl, it's, it's literally the bowl. So next we're gonna try measuring a potato chip and um, yeah. Are you just doing this uh, because you're bored? What? I'm not 
bored and shut in inside my house. I like being this way. But your friends invited me. Yeah, I know my friends invited me out and I said I'm not going. I just don't want to. I, just I don't have social anxiety. Okay. Okay. I'm fine. The other thing too is the literal platform is getting hot. The glass bed is also 160 degrees. What if it wasn't the bowl? What if it was the glass bed that was heating up the bowl because the glass bed was getting super hot? Okay, so I took out the glass bed. I took out the rings. I want to try the bowl thing one more time without that. I'm going to use a fresh Tupperware that is, as we can see, 73 degrees. This uh, Tupperware is going to go in for two and a half minutes, and we are going to see how hot it gets. Okay, just like last time. Let's do it. I think that even though you can't really understand the immediate benefits of a certain scientific experiment right away, I think that science has a way of proving that it's more useful than it seems. For instance, uh, if you subscribe to this channel right now, I will donate one microwave uh, to the homeless uh, per subscriber. Look, I can't even really, I can only afford maybe three microwaves tops. Like I, I really hope that people don't subscribe. Oh yeah, that smells like burnt plastic. 111. Yeah, so this definitely heats up on its own. It seems like everything but the food heats up on its own. And that heats up on its own. Literally everything heats up in the microwave. Who'd have thought? All right, well, we're gonna do one last experiment. I'm gonna put a potato chip in the microwave. I wonder how hot a potato chip is gonna get. Did the microwave short out? Oh no, I think I broke the microwave. Did it trip a fuse? Did the components get too hot? I'm very confused. So what did we learn? Uh, we learned that the bowls, the water, everything gets heated up by microwaves. We also learned that apparently really old microwaves break if you turn them on for more than 10 minutes. Didn't know that. So I think sometimes uh, science has a way of uh, surprising you. You know, I, I didn't realize the bowls would get that hot. Um, I didn't realize I would short out my microwave. I didn't know a lot of the things today were gonna happen today. But you know, I think that's, that's what keeps science exciting.